focus you. Yeah. All right. So a couple of years ago, Fender CEO Andy Mooney claimed that the average guitar player would spend $10,000 in his lifetime. Or hers. Now a shocking claim at first, but I think as any long-serving guitarist who takes stock of their haul would tell you, well it's not entirely unbelievable, is it? Well, luckily for you, this video isn't about a gear rundown that you should be spending your hard-earned coffers on, but rather a look at some of the gear beginner guitarists need not buy. You see, many of us suffer from gas, that is, gear acquisition syndrome, described by an article in Music Radar as the all-consuming desire to expand your collection of gear, bank balances have been battered and marriages destroyed, but by God, there's some lovely gear bought. Well, I'm here to tell you that a lot of this stuff, at least when you're first starting out, is likely to prove a waste of money and definitely won't make you a better guitar player. So starting with... Bloody... A big, powerful valve amp. Now, despite this thing weighing about the same as a Fiat 500, I really love this amp. I love the smell of it. So I bought this beast when I was 19 and my band was just starting to get serious and I needed a proper amp. And after withdrawing a sizable chunk of my student loan and a trip to PMT in Birmingham, I came home with this 60 watt Fender DeVille tube amp beast. Okay. Now I do genuinely love that amp, but it's just so bloody heavy. And anyone who's ever had to lug one of those up multiple flights of stairs to and from gigs will back me up on that. So weight's the obvious one. And why is that a bad thing? Well, when you're first starting out, and to be honest, even when you're pretty experienced and you're playing quite a lot, you want it to be as enjoyable as possible. And to put it bluntly, lugging that thing around is just not enjoyable. And when you're learning guitar, when you're first starting out, you want it to be as seamless and enjoyable as possible. Anything that could be a barrier, anything that could stop you from practicing, it's going to limit you progressing. So you wanna remove those barriers. But on top of that, and this really is probably the main reason, it is stupidly loud. Now, valve amps or tube amps are notoriously window shatteringly loud. I've never actually taken this amp beyond two of 12. To really get the tone and the beauty out of those tubes, you have to crank them up quite a lot. At that point, the tubes start to break up and go into that beautiful, creamy, overdriven sound that you just don't get at lower volumes. Because the thing is, you think, that's all right, because when I'm gigging, I'll need a big amp. That's exactly what I did. A lot of the, the, the bands and the guitarists that I really admired were using those amps. So I thought, I'll get the biggest amp I can afford, the biggest, loudest, noisiest amp I can get, because when I'm playing big gigs, then I'll need that power. The reality is, you turn up at any gig, the amp is close mic'd up, the sound guy just tells you to turn it down anyway. So even at a gig, I'm still not cranking it up beyond two. There are now just so many other options you can buy. You could just go for a very simple practice amp, a little desktop amp that when you're at home, playing in your bedroom and you don't want to fall out with the neighbors, little practice amp that often allows you to put headphones in is gonna be fine. You could spend a little bit of money on an amp modeling pedal. Now these are expensive foot pedals, but they're still probably cheaper than a lot of amps. They're small, they're light, they're portable, they can plug straight into a PA system, straight into, if you've got a laptop and speakers, you can plug it into that as a practice device and something you can take to gigs. Or if you really want the tube amp, just go for a more sensible sized one. A 15 watt, like the Vox AC 15, 15 watt, 30 watt, it's gonna be absolutely fine. You'll never need more than that. So item number two to not waste your money on. <laughs> An expensive or dream guitar. So before you go out and buy your dream guitar, it's worth considering what type of music you're going to be playing because not every guitar is created equal. There are different tools for different jobs, or in this case, different axes for different shredding. So this is a Gibson Les Paul. It is a solid block of wood and uses humbucker pickups. So humbucker pickups, I mean, I'll I'm no guitar tech, so I can't tell you a huge amount about them, but basically they are loud, loud shredding machines reverberating through a solid block of heavy wood creates 
a pretty powerful beast of a guitar. Imagine what the sound guy thought with me turning up with a Gibson Les Paul and a 60 watt Fender valve amp. So this is sort of a loud, obnoxious, untamable yob that you just wouldn't take home to meet your mother. Whereas this, on the other hand, is a Gretsch G something. I can never remember the uh, Gretsch G5420T. Now this is a hollow body guitar. It's pretty chunky, but completely hollow, which gives a completely different sound to the Gibson Les Paul. It's a lot more warm and mellow and kind of guitar you'd happily introduce to your gran. You see, when you're first starting out, you probably won't have figured out what it is you enjoy playing. You may think you want to play hard rock because that's what you listened to when you were growing up. But actually, after a couple of years of playing, you may figure out that it's the blues you love. A couple of years down the line, you might find out you've actually bought the wrong guitar for the job. So I think it's best to play for a couple of years, build up some skills and experience and find out what it is that you love. Of what gets you excited about playing before you commit to a really expensive guitar. And then there's also the law of diminishing returns. Now this is a principle that suggests the more money you spend on something, the less value you'll actually get from it. So as an example, let's say you're gonna buy a guitar for around two, 300 pounds. Uh, and instead you decide to buy a guitar for double that, kind of five, 600 pound. Now the 600 pound guitar, which is double the price of the 300 pound guitar, will probably be double the quality and double the value and it will feel twice as good. When you pick it up, you'll be able to feel that the wood is better, the strings are better, the machine heads, the pickups, the coils, everything will feel nicer. You will genuinely be getting double the value for paying double the price. But then say you double that again to around the 1200 pound, maybe even the 1500 pound, that undoubtedly will be a better guitar. It will be made with finer woods, with finer materials. The level of craftsmanship gone into that guitar will be better. But will it be double as good? Will it be twice the quality? Will it feel twice as good to play? And that's when the law of diminishing returns starts to come in. Yes, it will be a better guitar. And if you've been playing for a few years and you're looking for something that has a very particular feel, then spending that extra money may well be justified. But as a beginner, you probably won't notice the difference. I'd hold back, I'd save you money, practice a little bit, get a feel for the instrument. After a few years, you'll know where you wanna spend your money. Treat yourself. Now, number three, the third thing I wouldn't waste too much money on is fancy. Oops. Oh, stay there, you flaming. Fancy foot pedals. But will they make you a better guitar player? No. Well, technically, they might make you sound better, and I guess music is an auditory experience, so if you sound better, then but they still won't make you play better. And half the pedals that you will inevitably buy won't get used half the time anyway. You see, you don't need to alter your sound to sound better. You need experience and technique. I honestly think you'd be better off rather than spending a few hundred pound on one of these, spend it on an online guitar course or even go to a gig, go, go to a live event and, and be inspired. Honestly, the money spent on live music, the ideas that you'll come back with, the inspiration you'll come back with and that motivation is probably worth more than the pedal. Now, aside from maybe buying a distortion pedal if your amp doesn't have a dirty channel built in, the rest of them can be accumulated over time as you start to hone your tone, as you start to realize what kind of guitar player you are and what kind of pedals you need. Save your money, spend it on experiences, as you start to get better, as you realize the kind of guitar player you want to be, then start parting with your cash on these very fun little boxes. Now the fourth thing I wouldn't bother spending any money on I got any left? These things, fancy plectrums or picks for our American friends. Now, I'll be honest with you, these aren't fancy at all. They are cheap Jim Dunlop 
I mean, I can't remember how much they cost, to be honest. I've just got a load of them off Amazon. And that's because I haven't actually got any fancy plectrums left uh, because I've lost them all over the years. They're probably all down the back of the sofa uh, or in my daughter's Barbie house being used as serving platters. But I did go through a phase of buying these little expensive kind of thin wooden ones or ergonomically designed ones that are uh, claimed to make you play faster. Now, whilst that may not be a false claim, these things tend to only help you if you're already very accomplished and are just looking for that 1% improvement. Unless you're already quite accomplished, you're probably not gonna notice much difference. In fact, it may actually hinder your playing. But to be honest, part of it for me is just about being low maintenance. I like being able to use pretty much any plectrum I'm given in any situation and being able to play something. I think a good guitar player should be able to make a guitar sound good regardless of the environment and regardless of the tools. And I'm not limited by the type of plectrum you give me. And last on the list is expensive guitar tuners. Now there is definitely an argument for these expensive, particularly these foot pedal type tuners. Particularly if you do a lot of live playing, you want to be able to tune very accurately, very quickly and very quietly. You see, when you press this down, it cuts the volume from your guitar. So if you're midway through a song and you realize your guitar's out of tune, you can cut the volume very quickly, tune your string back up, press it back down again, Bob's your uncle, you're back in the room. So undoubtedly very useful. But if you're just starting out, this clip-on tuner, will do the job and it costs less than a tenner. There's plenty of free apps on your phone you can use as well, but the point is, unless you know you need complete accuracy and the ability for the tuner to pick up full chords during the middle of a gig, for most of us, or most beginners, you just don't need it. And so there you go, that's your lot for today, I think. Um, at least that's all I can think of. If you can think of any other items that guitarists love to waste money on, uh, do let me know in the comments. If you like this kind of stuff, consider subscribing. It really does mean the world to me. Maybe gently tap the like button, and with that, perhaps I'll see you in the next video, because you won't be down the guitar shop spending all your money on things you don't need.